welcome welcome to all Welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. Go ahead and begin to share this message as you join. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Go ahead and share. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Wherever you're connecting from, welcome. Hallelujah. Wherever you're connecting from, welcome, welcome, welcome. Glory to God. It is Monday evening. I encourage you to go ahead and begin to share. Invite your friends. Invite your cousin. <laughs> yes, we're going to pray. Invite your friends. Invite the people that you care for. We are going to pray. <coughs> We thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercies. Hallelujah. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. I see uh, Jamaica. I see Guyana. Kingston, Jamaica. Hallelujah. I see Trinidad. Somebody go ahead and share. I see New Jersey. Somebody said, what a surprise. No, it's not a surprise. Whatever the Lord is doing, let us just embrace what God is doing. My God, let us embrace what the Lord is doing. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Welcome, 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 welcome. Go ahead and share. Go ahead and begin to share this message. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you. We are here one more time, oh God, to pray. We place you before us right now. Have your way, oh Lord. Let thy will be done. Speak, oh God. Speak to us this hour. I humble myself. I slay the flesh right now. Rise up my spirit, man, O oh God, and take control. And let your will be done in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, according to your word. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Yes. I just came to share one scripture and to pray. <laughs> Somebody said breakfast and supper. Welcome, 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 welcome. I enjoy evenings. I do. But because of my location, 
I'm not permitted to preach late because I have to whisper. Mm -hmm. Because of where I live. <coughs> Hallelujah. Go ahead and begin to share. If you really love the Lord, go ahead and share the message. Thank you, Jesus. If you really love the Lord, go ahead and begin to share. And let the Lord use you. Jesus. Mm. It is well. I don't know who the Lord sent me here to talk to at this hour. But I came to let you know it is well. I don't know who the Lord sent me here to talk to at this hour. But I came to tell you it is well. Go ahead and begin to share. <coughs> I just want to say it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your last name is. It doesn't matter where you're living, your current address. It doesn't matter where you were born. Your blessings can be hindered. Yes. So I encourage you to pray. Every opportunity that is given to you. Use it to pray. Don't hesitate. According to the book of Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, Jesus spoke in parables. And he said, all men ought to pray. All, not some. So if you turn your Bible to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, just that, first verse hallelujah Jesus was talking in parables for them to understand that it's imperative the Bible declare in the book of Luke chapter 18 and he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always pray and not to faint. You see, some people don't understand. Men ought to pray always. Always. Even when everything is going great, pray. Don't wait until there is an issue. Don't wait until someone is sick or you lose your job or you know the time is coming when your visa is about to run out and you don't know what to do. Pray. Send up your prayers fast. Some of us, we cannot fast because the fridge is loaded. But there are times when we have to stay away from the kitchen, stay away from the restaurant, stay away from the cafeteria. Just fast and pray. The food will always be there. But there are some issues that we are having that we cannot continue to entertain it 
there are some people that God is sending in our directions to be a blessing to our life. And guess what? They can't reach us because Satan is holding them back. There are some powerful men and women of God for us to meet. And it's not happening. Only to find out that Satan, Satan hinder the people that God is sending to you. It means that you have to pray. If you open your Bible over to the book of 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, chapter 2. I'm going to start at verse 17. Welcome, welcome, welcome for those of you that are here. Hallelujah. I just came with a quick word. It's not long. I'm not going to be here for long. Just a quick word. Just to let some people know that don't get too comfortable. You might be waiting for the broadcast for you to come and pray and some distractions are taking place you won't get to see it because the devil is busy blocking you some people said oh I have everything I need I don't have to pray when I needed to finish school I pray my mama pray everybody pray when I was going to the airport they were praying and once the plane landed they don't have to pray because I'm I reach. No. Jesus said, men are to always pray and don't faint. So I encourage you. I encourage you to get into prayer. To to develop a serious prayer life. Study the Bible. Study the word of God. Don't just read and rush through the scriptures and you don't understand. Get a pen. Get some paper. Take notes. So when it's time for you to pray, you can apply the scriptures. The, the, oh, you know the reason why some people pray and their prayers are so effective? Because they study the Bible. They study. They get into privacy with God. And they get real intimate with God. The reason why some people when they open their mouth to speak or to pray, they spit fire. Why? Because they spend a lot of hours in prayer in the word if you don't have the word in you you cannot send bullets hallelujah jesus give me one second Hello. If you don't read the word of God and focus and meditate, meditate on his word. then you're not reading, you're not studying, you're not filling up. The reason why favor follow some people, the reason why goodness and mercy follow some people, they spend the quality time in the word. And when it's time for them to open their mouth to speak, the Lord will speak. All you have to do is be available. There is no magic to nothing when it comes to God. Just be available and he will use you. He will manifest himself. If your vessel is clean, 
And I'm not talking about those things in the kitchen. I'm talking about your vessel, your temple. Your body is a temple of God where the Holy Spirit dwells. Jesus. Hello? Can I call you right back? Thank you. I'm just letting you know. Spend time with God. Spend time in the Word. Spend quality time. Don't, don't just run through the Word and then when midnight the midnight hour and that pain show up or sickness show up or you receive a phone call you cannot pray why you don't know what to say because you're empty let us read first thessalonians chapter 2 and i'm gonna start at verse 17. i'm not here to stay i just came to drop this in your spirit I just came here to drop this word in your spirit. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 17. It says, But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time, in presence, not in heart. Only in presence, but not in the heart. So while they were away, in their heart, they were still present. Amen? Endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. I'm in King James Version. And if you're not careful, it will tie up your tongue. Hallelujah. It says in verse 18, it says, Wherefore? We would have come unto you, even I, Paul, Jesus, once and again, but Satan endured us. Verse 19 says, For what is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing, are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming, for you are our glory and joy. And this was Paul talking. What the Bible is saying here, they went away. And when it was time for them to return, they wanted to come back to be a blessing. Some people leave. And they went to the battlefield and they went into training. And they work hard. They labored in Christ. And when it's time for them to come back and be a blessing to you, the devil, Satan, hindered. He said, dear brothers and sisters, after we were separated from you for a little while, though in our hearts we never left you. You know, sometimes some people gone, but they are still with us. They traveled in this sense, I'm talking about traveled, but they were still in the heart. We ponder, we think about them, we pray for them, we ask the Lord to sustain them, to keep them, to suffice them. Hallelujah. Jesus. He says, though our hearts never left, we tried very hard to come back because of our intense longing to see you again. In verse 18, make it clear, it said, we wanted very much to come to you. And I, Paul, try again and again. No amount of anointing could remove the demons and, this, and, the, and the devil 
out of the way. Many of us, our, our blessings are, we are close to it. We are next in line for our blessings. But Satan hinder the individual that God sent to us. It's not like Paul didn't want to go. He said, even when I was not with you, you were in my heart. I wanted, I had strong desire to come back to minister to you, to pray with you, to lift you up in prayer, to lay hands on you. But Satan hinder me. You see why? We have to pray. Even for our destiny helpers. Even for those that God is sending to be a blessing. You see, when you pray and you feel like you're having a breakthrough, don't stop. The moment you stop praying, the moment you stop int intensifying your prayers, that is the moment when the devil enter. The Bible said, don't leave any back door for the devil to enter. Don't be ignorant of the devices of the enemies. I say this all the time. When I'm not here on social media, pray for me. Because I'm still doing the work of God. The work of God continues. 90% of God's work is not being done on social media. It's done off the air. So I encourage you to hold up El Shaddai in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Satan. Satan hindered the apostle. So he was not able to return at the time that was set. Hallelujah. At the time that was set, Satan, even when you think your breakthrough is here, don't stop. Because some of us, we get so excited and we're happy and we are rejoicing. So we stop praying. We start rejoicing. We start to rejoice. We don't remember that we are, we are supposed to continue in warfare. And this is why during this month of June, we're going to be praying. We're not going to stop. We're going to keep the momentum. Hallelujah. Yes. We're not going to get cold. We started off hot. You see, Paul said, who will be with you? You started off so strong in the spirit. And now you got lukewarm. And now you, you, you got perfect in the flesh. Meaning that you're no longer praying. Because you think you made it. You don't have to pray anymore. That's not true. The very person that God is sending to bless you. Have been hindered. You are so busy not paying attention. This is why things are not rolling. This is why things are not happening. This is why some doors are still closed. Because you stop praying. You have to continue. You have to keep the fire burning. Hallelujah. Mighty God. We have to continue in prayer. Somebody open your mouth and pray. Oh God. Release my destiny helper. You see the destiny helper was released. But Satan hindered the destiny helper along the way. So we have to pray that they will never be distracted. We will we have to pray that they will never there will never be any setback. Because when your destiny listen to me by chance, your destiny helper have been held back, have been hindered. You know what's gonna happen? You're gonna get discouraged. The same thing happened to Daniel. We cannot afford to lose hope. We have to take heart in this time. We cannot afford to break down. We cannot afford to quench the spirit. 
we have to feed our spirit man so when things begin to happen we are ready we are ready when you feed listen to me you cannot wait until you're going to war before you start practicing you cannot wait until war has been declared before you continue to work out if you're gonna run a marathon you have to practice you have to train any job that you're about to do you need you need yes you need training hallelujah going in the military they're gonna recruit you you have to go into training you want to lose weight you have to exercise change your diet do something so when you want to see results you have to put in the work some of us we have some old bags that we need to throw out we don't even need to open them and go through them we just need to throw them out because they have mm, they don't carry any value anymore those are the things that's holding us back it's time people of god to pray you see a lot of people begin to eat healthy since the beginning of the pandemic they begin to boost their immune system they begin to take their vitamins they yes they begin to take all kinds of concoction to keep them going because we found out that the this thing it attacks the immune system it attacks the body function so people begin to feed themselves hallelujah so i encourage you to feed your spirit Aha. yes we found out that covid 19 attacks the immune system so we begin to feed our system we begin to take care of our system strengthen our system with different types of um concoction things that you boil you mix whatever wherever it comes from you put it into action so you can your body can fight off anything that will come build up a wall against it and now we need to strengthen our spirit man give him vim vigor not just in food we need to feed the spirit and how you feed the spirit with the word of god and praying and fasting fasting is discipline people of god at the end uh let me look at the calendar because we are about to enter we are about to enter into fasting in the next what week and a half yes glory to god jesus we are about to enter into fasting and it's not a joke my god it is not a joke we need to feed our spirit man and every month we're gonna spend time in fasting you don't have to know me just listen to what the lord is saying and be obedient that's it so on the 24th of june which is next thursday we're going on fasting to the 30th of june for seven days i encourage you to join in i encourage you to participate many of you you need to go in that fasting and to get out that 
those old bags and dump them and begin to pray and strengthen some of us we have some things that we don't need and when I say things that we don't need, they no longer carry value. Those people are far gone. We don't need to hold on to those memories. We need to pray and study the word of God and stand in the word of God and begin to pray for the people around us. I receive so many prayer requests. And it's a lot of kids involved. Most of the prayer requests that I receive are young people who could be my children and my grandchildren. It means that we're going to have to get serious and get radical in prayer. It's not a joke. The devil is not playing with us. The devil is attacking the younger generation to slow them down. So we have to pray. Glory to God. We have to pray. Pray without ceasing. God said, don't give me no rest. The word cease means don't stop. God said, don't give me any rest. I don't want no rest because I don't blink. God said, I don't blink, so don't stop praying. The moment you stop praying, that's the moment the enemy step in. So every chance you get, pray. Hallelujah. My God. Somebody said, don't stop praying. Just because you receive a blessing or think you are there. You're good now. Continue in prayer. Hallelujah. We have to pray. We have to keep the... You see, people of God, let me share something with you. When I look at the prayer requests, there is also one young man. I think he's in New Jersey. He was in an accident six years ago. And he's paralyzed from his waist down. Many of you are here. Don't take it for granted when it's time to pray. So starting next week, Thursday, we're going on fasting. We need doors to be open. It pains my heart to see children suffer. It pains my heart. So I encourage you, people of God. The apostle said, we wanted very much to come to you. And I, Paul, even I, when he said, and I, Paul, remember, Paul prayed. And when Paul prayed, the prison doors were open. The jailer wanted to kill himself. Every shackle was broken in prison. So he said, me, Paul, I, even I who prayed in the past where God did some miracles. Satan hinder me. It means that it's some serious warfare some people have. When you pray, pray. So I could get out of this place. Where I can roll. Wrap up in Jesus and roll late that night and cry out to God. Because it cannot happen here. I cannot make noise past a certain time. This is why I don't go live at night anymore. I cannot... A lot of restrictions and limitations where I live. So, in the daytime, it's all good. But when it comes to night, some nights I can't sleep, but I can't come on life to pray. No, I can't. Because I'm restricted. My God. So I just want you to know this. Paul said, Paul, even I. Paul, when he said, even I. He was referring to things that God used him to do and he destroyed some things in the spirit. But this time, as good as he was, as a heavily anointed as he was, Paul was heavily anointed. And as anointed as he was, he said, even I, Satan prevent me, I couldn't come. It meant that these people had some serious warfare.
Hallelujah. It meant that they had some serious warfare going on. And no matter the amount of anointing that was upon his life, it couldn't. It couldn't slow down Satan. Don't stop praying, my brothers and my sisters. Don't give up. When I read the message, the lady said her son, young man, from his waist down, dead, because he was in an accident. You see how the devil wicked? I received a message today that the little boy, Joshi, that we, we were praying for, he came out of the hospital. He's home today. He's doing a little better. You see why we have to pray? A lot of young people are in trouble. They are not covered and the devil attacked them. They are not covered and the devil attacked them. So when you hear me, he, when you see me here preaching and, and, and sending gunshots in the realms of the spirit and bullets and bullet, bullet, bullet and fire, fire, fire to cover children, join me. Join me. Join me. Hallelujah. We have to cover children. Cover them. If you don't have any, cover the ones around you. Cover somebody's child. I cover every children that is connected to this platform. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cover them. Many of us, we feel like because we, 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 we are married... We got the job, we got the house, we got the car, we got the bling. We don't have to pray anymore. Hey, those are the targets. Mm -mm. Some people believe because they made it to a certain point, or maybe because there are a certain amount of cash in the bank, they don't have to pray. No, it's not true. That's when they really need to pray. Hallelujah. Pray. Pray for your children. Many of us are praying and we're not, we don't remember the children. We don't remember them. And then the devil attacked them. And we declare, oh, I think something is going on. Yes, something has been going on. You cover yourself and don't cover the children and the devil attacked the children. To stop them. So I encourage you people of God. Just know. It doesn't matter how anointed. A woman of God is. It doesn't matter how anointed. A man of God is. The devil. Satan can hinder him. Or her. It is written right here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18. It said, we wanted very much to come to you and I, Paul, tried. This is where we have to focus. I, Paul, tried again and again. But Satan prevented us. Glory to God. You see? The reason why he was emphasizing on him, himself. Because Timothy knew, they knew how anointed the man was. But as heavily anointed as he was, Satan, Satan, Satan. I remember my mom when I, when I, when I, when I get to these scriptures because I was very disobedient. And oh, she used to rebuke me all the time. And she would say, Satan, Satan. Satan, and she would, hmm, that's it. She never utter another word. 
She said, Satan, Satan, Satan. <clears throat> you don't want you don't want her to go any further. I just walk away. I just walk away. Because she was rebuking me. You see, pay attention to all your children. Pay attention to these little children, these little babies that's around us. Pay attention to them. Hallelujah. Pay attention. Pay close attention to them. Sometimes they are talking to you, and if you listen good, the Lord is using them. Hallelujah. The Lord is using them. You might not have any children. Pay attention to the nieces and the nephews. Your friends' children. You know, co-workers' children. Those that are attached to you. Are, are close to you. Who are connected to you. My God. Jesus. Prayer should be a lifestyle. Yes. You know, let me say this right here. I needed gas. And yesterday I went to the gas station. And um, the gas station was full. So I said, it's okay, I'll go get it today. I went out to get some gas because I never know. You never know when you're going to have bad weather or the weather changes here a lot. So I said, let me go and get the gas today. So I went to the gas station. And after I got the, got the gas, I pulled up at the grocery store and I sat there in the car. And there was a lady. And she was walking. I don't know. The Lord just opened my eyes. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at her. Remember, mind you, in the store, there are carts in the store. And she grabbed a cart from outside. And by the time she get to where my car was, because I'm sitting in my car, she pushed the cart, she turned back, and she went all the way down. And the Lord began to reveal the woman to me. And he said, look at her. Look at her. People of God, let me share something with you. You never know who you're going to run into on the street. The Lord began to show me, look at her. She's oppressed. She is oppressed. She's taking the long way to do everything. Remember, the carts are in the store. She took one from off, oh my God, in the parking lot. And it's a nice journey to get into the store. And the woman was, I said, look, I, I felt it in my heart. And I began to utter a prayer for the Lord to release the woman. There are some people, grown people. That are oppressed. And when I say oppressed. The devil have them on their shoulders. On their backs. Their life is difficult. I said Lord. The way she look. The way she dress. People of God we have to pray. She could. She maybe could be my mother. You know or an, an older sister. But I just, I just look at her and I, I, I begin to just thank God I'm saved. Have you ever seen someone on the street and then you look at your life and you begin to thank God you're saved? May the Lord have mercy upon those of you that are here that are not saved. May the Lord have mercy upon you and your children. Glory to God. Meryl Felix, welcome. Hallelujah. Meryl Felix, you have work to do for the Lord. I don't know you. I don't know you. But the Lord is saying, Make yourself available so he can use you. The Lord is speaking to me about you. Meryl Felix, the Lord is speaking to me about you. 
And the Lord is saying that he's got work for you to do. Make yourself available. Be more available so God can use you. The harvest is plentiful according to Jesus Christ. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. I don't know where you're connecting from, but I pray for you. You have spiritual work. I don't know if you are in ministry. I don't know. But what the Lord is telling me that there are spiritual work for you to do. And you're not available the way that the Lord wants you to be. Meryl Felix. The Lord is waiting on your availability. Your work, your assignment is waiting. And no one can fill it. No one can take your place. No one can walk in your shoes. You already have your testimony. And God is saying it's time for you to get ready so the work can continue. There is no way around it. It doesn't matter what kind of job you do to make money. Whatever job God has for you, you're going to have to walk into it. Because if you don't walk into it, accident is going to haunt you. Hallelujah. Yes. And when I say accident, I'm talking about physical automobile accident will haunt you. Aren't you? When I say aren't you, I mean it's going to come after you, one behind the other. Before you know it, you're going to be in a vehicle with accident. Another one, yes, God is calling you and you are not available 100%. I don't even know if you're in ministry, but what the Lord is saying, he need you. He need you. You have the gift. It's upon your life. It's all over you. He needs you. May the Lord have mercy upon you in this time. As you walk in obedience for the call of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. You know there's an old saying. You can lead the horse to the water. But you cannot make him drink it. And there are some of us who are so blessed and we don't know. You know, we are looking for blessings. We are looking for earthly blessings. And God is saying, you're going to have to be a blessing. Oh, Jesus. My God. So I pray. I pray. Somebody says, surrender before God make you surrender. I pray that you move in faith and be obedient to God before God make you surrender because he said accident accident physical automobile accident will haunt you Jesus I pray against every accident that have been assigned to your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth you know I was here I don't remember if it was Friday yes because I didn't go live Saturday Friday, I received a phone call from a young lady that was on the live here with us. The Lord was using me to speak in her life. And she called me and she said, woman of God, it's true. You said even when I count my money, my money don't look right. And I go back and count it again. She called me to confirm. She said, it's true. She said, even when I count the money, I count it again. And I count the money, it still don't look right. So I might be sitting here and I'm calm because this is the messenger that I'm here with right now he is calm believe the word of God believe the word of God and watch what the Lord will do for you hallelujah glory to God sister Debbie I'm praying praying for your, you and your children I'm praying for the Lord to show up. I'm praying for your testimony. 
the only way testimony can come is when God do something. So I'm praying for your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Many of many of us, I remember when I was in sin. There are some people that knew me when I was in sin who used to tell me that continue go to the club continue you keep going to the club because God is gonna pull you out of the club and I remember one night I was in the club in Fort Lauderdale Florida drinking dancing I put my I, I, I put my drink down and I was dancing away when I stopped dancing, I took a sip and I got tired, so I was cooling off. One woman came and whispered in my ear. I say this thing here all the time and whisper in my ear and ask me, why did you stop dancing? I took it personal. I took it as an insult and that was it. I'm not, enter I'm not an entertainer. So I just want to say this right here. The thing that we love more than God, the thing will, will come against us. The very thing that we love more than how we love the Lord, it will come against us. It will turn against us. The alcohol, it will, it, it will cause us to vomit. The cigarette, it will cause us to be sick. Whatever we place before God, we will despise it in the end. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus. We will despise it. My God. Mighty God. Somebody saying, God, don't joke. Whatever it takes, he will make you bow and surrender. Accident, prison, divorce, losing your job, whatever God will it, God will do you to get the glory. It's true. I am a testimony to that. Hallelujah. I've been around the block so many times. And I end up doing God's work. Because he has been calling me since I was a young person. I fight. I fight it. I avoid it. I resisted. My God. So I encourage you people of God. Pray. Do you know how many people out there that are looking, questioning God? What's their purpose? Oh, Jesus. Some people are even picking up the mantle that God never give them. Some people create their own mantle. It's true. Some people call themselves to ministry who God never call. And the ones that God is calling to ministry, they're hiding. They hide. Jesus. Yes. The ones that are the ones that God did not call. They're high. They're high and mighty in ministry. But check out the ones who he has endowed with the gifts. They hide. They don't want nobody to know. But Jesus said, if you deny me before your friends, I will deny you before my father. Yeah. Jesus, somebody, vibes cartel had to go to prison. Yes, I was reading an article. It said vibes cartel had to go to prison now before God, to bow before God. That is when he knew the emptiness. I was reading that article with Vibes Cartel, and he said, he's no longer the world boss. <laughs> there are some people who like to call other people father. God is jealous. He said, don't call no other man father. I am your father. Don't call no man father. It is written in the Bible. Mighty God. 
He said, don't call no man father. The man said, I am not the world boss. You see, there is a reggae song that says, one, one o'clock, two o'clock, Jesus had the done. Three o'clock, four o'clock, we run Satan. Something like that. I, I, I like the beat. It's a young woman that's singing. Hey, one o'clock, two o'clock, Jesus had the done. Three o'clock, four o'clock, we run Satan. Five o'clock, six o'clock. <laughs> you know, I... I <laughs> <laughs> it's it, she was rapping you know in in the song on the rhythm but i'm here to let you know jesus is king of kings jesus christ is lord and until we begin to acknowledge that there is no other god before him we cannot call any man father there was a man in a community that I used to live in, Spanish Town, Jamaica. And they used to call him father. And he got locks on his head. I used to go to his supermarket. He owned a supermarket. And I remember a couple of years ago, I asked a friend of mine, I said, is that store still there in Tarspen? She said, oh, he died. You cannot call no other man father. You see, God is jealous. God is so jealous. He have people, the whole community call him father. Oh, Jesus. The whole community call him father. But I came to let you know, people of God, we need to know the word of God so we can move with good sense. Yes, good sense. We cannot live our life to please God and continue doing foolishness. No. We need to move in the spirit. We need to be obedient. We need to humble ourselves. We need to learn to say thank you. Please and thank you. As children of God, it's a form of humility. Some of us, because, you know, we, 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 we see things in front of us that other people don't have we are so privileged we want them to bow down to us no that's not what the bible said we shouldn't bow down to any man our enemies will bow down to us so when you bow down to people it makes you their enemies according to the word of god he said your enemies shall be your footstool so when you bow down to people you go on your knees and you're no, 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 no. No way. When a man ways pleases God, even his enemies will be at peace with him. Your enemies will be your footstool. So when you bow down to an individual, it makes you an enemy. Because according to the word, confusion. We humble ourselves before God. I pray for you to receive favor from God and favor from man. I pray that you find favor with God and favor with man. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Jesus. The man said, I used to call myself world boss. Vibes Cartel was famous. Very famous. He's still famous in prison. He's not going to be the same person that was carrying on. No, he's calling out to Jesus Christ. Some people wait until they end up in prison, the hospital bed, before they begin to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is king of kings. Is the only one that can make all things new, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. The Lord have done it all. Only God Almighty can make all things become new. Hey, so it's time for us to be steadfast in the word. Glory to God. It's time. It's time. 
Paul said, even I, as heavily anointed as I was, the devil gave me a hard time. Prevent me, Jesus. Satan, hinder me. He said, even I, as heavily as an, uh, anointed as he was, Jesus, My God. He said, I want to come. I want to come back to see you. But the adversary, Satan, those who fight against the word of God, those who fight against God's people, those who fight against the things that God stands for. He was on his way to come. But the devil show up with all kind of distraction. So God's work cannot continue. Your blessing is hindered because the devil is fighting your destiny helper. My destiny helper will never die prematurely in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Those who God have prepared for me to take me to the next level, they will never be cut off short. Open your mouth and pray. Those who God is sending to be a blessing to your life, they will never be redirected. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray right now. My God. Somebody said, God will sit you down to humble you. It's true. He did that to me. I thought I was all that and more. And God humbled me. Mm -hmm. It's time for us to repent and get it right with God. Tomorrow may be too late. People are dying. People are still dying. Young people are dying and they are not saved. They are not going to heaven. So when you see some young people dying, you're in, there are so many funerals going on right now. Hallelujah. A friend of mine, she sent me a video today, her mother's funeral in Canada. And her daughter's, her granddaughter, her first and only granddaughter, funeral. Jesus. In Jamaica. She was raped and killed. She was raped and killed. She's a teenager. She's 16 years old. Her father died. So the generation stops right there because she died as a teenager. She was cut off short. You see, the cemetery is filled with all kinds of professions. The cemetery is rich. I think it was this pastor from the Bahamas that mentioned this, that the cemetery is rich. Um, yeah, that man that crashed in the plane. Hallelujah. He said the cemetery is rich because a, young, a lot of young people are buried with, your, with great destiny. They never made it. So the cemetery is filled with professors. The cemetery is filled with doctors and lawyers and teachers. The cemetery is filled with a lot of lieutenants and colonels. The cemetery is filled with judge and politicians that never made it. Their destiny, their life was cut off short. Young people die. Great destiny ahead of them. They never made it. So the cemetery is rich. Hallelujah. So now, her mother's funeral was yesterday. And her granddaughter's funeral is the end of this month. Hallelujah. But we pray that the Lord sustain her. We pray that the Lord sustain her. She lost her son. And when she finally get to meet 
his daughter, her granddaughter. A week later, the girl died. Teenager. The devil is a liar. People of God, we have to pray for young people and cover them in the blood of Jesus Christ. The things that are happening. Only God can save us. Only God can save us. Somebody say, oh Lord, help me. Help me, oh God. Help my children. Help those that are related to me. Help those that are connected to me. My God, near and far. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this message. My God. Jesus. I don't know who the Lord sent me here to encourage. But I just want you to know that the Lord loves you. Jesus loves you. My God. Glory to God. Jesus. Mm. It is well. No, tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Hallelujah. Yes, Miles Monroe. That was the guy down there from the Bahamas. He said it. The cemetery is loaded with wealth. The cemetery is rich. When young people die, their destiny, they never make it. Who was supposed to be doctor, lawyer, teacher, nurse, pilot, captain for ships, professors in colleges? Jesus. That's why we have to pray and cover the children. Mm hmm May the Lord bless you all. May the Lord bless you all. May your destiny helper never be hindered. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May your destiny helper never be hindered. May those who the Lord is sending in your direction never be hindered. Glory to God. According to the word of God, Paul said, After all, what give us hope and joy, and what will be what will be our proud reward and crown as we stand before our Lord Jesus when he return, it is you. Yes. You are our pride and joy. You see, he wanted to come to pray, but he couldn't because Satan hindered him. Can you imagine? The same thing happened to Daniel. We're talking Bible. The same thing happened to Daniel. Daniel, the, the angel said to Daniel, I wanted to come. Your blessing was released. The message, I, I came with the message. I was on my way, but the prince of Persia withstood me. I couldn't come. So I had to send, you know, the angel to fight him and destroy him and the king of Greece. Makoroboko Sataya. To destroy him, the prince of Persia, and then destroy the king. So therefore he could get to Greece. You see, many of us, our, our, our breakthrough is trapped in other places. Oh, my God. Yes. It's trapped in other places. And God is saying, continue in prayer. Continue in prayer. Don't get too comfortable. Some people think they don't need God because they finished school. No. Nah. Some people think they don't need God because they got that visa and it's time for them to travel. That's when you really need God. 
Some people think they don't need God because they finally got married. You're joking. That's when the devil is going to attack that marriage. Some people think they don't need God because they finally get that job. You're wrong. That's when the enemy is going to show up. Hallelujah. So tonight we're going to pray for breakthrough. It's time for your breakthrough. Open your mouth and pray. It will never be endured. Your breakthrough will never be endured. My God. Your breakthrough will never be endured. Whatever God has for you, it will not be endured. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it will never be hindered. You will be blessed. You will be blessed going out. You will be blessed coming in. You will be blessed in the city. Your children will be blessed in the city. They will be blessed in the field. They will be blessed when they come. They will be blessed when they go. My God. Hallelujah. Yes. If you're here and you're not working, I pray for the Lord to bless you financially. Bless you with that job, that new move. Bless you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you are here and you're looking to move and you're contemplating where to go, I'm praying for direction in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for divine direction to, for you to, my God, to locate that spot. For the Lord to reveal it to you. Reveal it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for direction. I pray for that move. I pray for that breakthrough right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your breakthrough will never be hindered. I'm praying that the Lord bring you through. You will never be stuck at one spot. Hallelujah. I pray for you right now. Jesus. I pray for you, for favor to locate you, for you to find favor with man and favor with God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. My God, favor with man, favor with God. Mighty God, favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Mighty Boko Roboko Sataya. Favor. Divine favor. Divine favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Favor. Glory to God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Favor wherever you go. I decree and I declare favor over your life right now right now I decree and I declare the favor of God to locate you to move you out of that spot because many of you desire to move you don't know where to turn you don't have the resources to move. I pray that doors will be open that no man can shut you know this is in the book of Revelation chapter 3 God said, I am the only one that can do that. Open doors and no man can shut it. So we pray. Hallelujah. Thy will be done in your life according to the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Jesus. I encourage somebody to go ahead and be a blessing. If this message has blessed your spirit, go ahead and be a blessing in this time. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you all. If the Lord drop it in your spirit to bless the ministry with offering, whatever it is, go ahead and do so. The number is 860-634-8557. You can use PayPal, you can use Zelle or Cash App. 
and the Lord will bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. My time is up. I have to go. 860-634-8557. Be a blessing. Hallelujah. And watch God bless you.